Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Subaru Crosstrek, we're going to be showing you how to install the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver. Before we do that though, let's take a minute, check it out, and make sure it's going to be the right hitch for you. So when it comes to putting a trailer hitch on a vehicle like the Crosstrek, it makes complete sense. You know, people use these vehicles to do a little bit of everything. Um, and whether, you know, you're looking to tow something, use an accessory, or even both, um, this hitch will definitely get the job done. There are several hitches available for the Crosstrek, and if it was me and I was gonna put one on my own vehicle, this would probably be the one I would go with. I think it's the best uh, general purpose, all around hitch, and I think it is definitely one of the better looking ones as well. For the most part, you're really not gonna be able to see too much. Uh, the crossbar is pretty much hidden, and just the receiver tube um, is, is essentially uh, gonna be visible. It has a matte black finish to it, it matches the plastic on her bumper, and I think looks a little more modern. Um, but that's just my opinion. There's a Kurt one available that looks pretty much identical, it just has a gloss finish, so if that matches your car better, that you could select that. Um, and there's a draw tight available as well, but that one's gonna hang down. You'll be able to see the majority of it, uh, but it is a little more heavy duty um, and at least suited for primarily towing, at least in my opinion. But I uh, really can't go wrong with any of them. With this being a class three hitch, it's gonna have the two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, which is a good thing. It's a super common size, so a lot of stuff works with it. Uh, it is going to use the standard 5 8 pen and clip. One doesn't come included with the hitch. If you need one, not a huge deal. Grab it here at each trailer. A lot of times, too, if you end up buying a new accessory, it'll come with one. So just something to look out for there. And the safety chain openings are a loop style. You, know, you got quite a bit of room. And you should be able to use pretty much any size hook that your trailer might have on it. When it comes to the weight capacities, the hitch is gonna have some pretty good numbers. Maximum gross tongue weight rating is gonna be 525 pounds. That's the amount of weight that is pushing down on the hitch. So that's good for those one to four bike racks. I'll give you an example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's gonna be 3,500 pounds or the amount of weight pulling on the hitch. So there's the weight of your trailer plus anything you might have in or on it. And one thing I do always like to recommend, never a bad idea just to grab your Subaru's owner's manual. That way you can check in there and make sure that your cross track can handle that much weight safely. We'll grab a couple measurements now and these will help us figure out what type of accessories will work best. So from the ground to the top and side edge of the receiver tube opening, that's gonna be about 15 inches. So if you're gonna be doing some towing, uh, you could probably use a ball mount that has a straight shank or one with a very small rise in it. Probably work out for most people and it's high enough uh, up off the ground to where if your accessory has a straight shank, you'll be fine. If it has one with the rise in it, even better, uh, buy you a little more ground clearance. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's only about two and a half inches, which is really good, so shouldn't uh, run into too many issues here, but if need be, you can use that to help figure out exactly those folding accessories can be stored upright without hitting the back of your Subaru. So when it comes down to it, uh, like I said, if it were me and I was going to put a hitch on my Crosstrek, this would probably be the one. I think it looks really good and it'll handle just about anything you want to throw at it. As far as the installation goes, it's really not too bad. Um, you are going to have to enlarge a couple of holes just a little bit uh, to make them big enough to let the, the hardware go up into the frame, but not a huge deal, even if you only have a hand tool, like a file, it's definitely doable and it won't take forever by any means. So uh, just stay patient and, and focus. You should be in good shape. Uh, with that said, why don't we go ahead, pull into the garage and get started on it now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be working underneath the back of our Subaru and we're gonna focus our attention on the bottom of our frame rails. And uh, whatever we do to one side of our vehicle, we're also gonna to do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. We're gonna have two rubber plugs that we can remove. So this one here, you can just take a screwdriver or something and pop that out. And you'll have this one. And then what I did, which you can do too if you want, 
this area here, our hitch kind of is going to sit right there. And sometimes you have a bunch of sealer kind of piled up on there. Um, if you want, sometimes it makes it easier to get it installed. You can take a scraper or something like that and just kind of work some of that sealer off and, and get it out of the way. The hardware that we're going to use will be a spacer block and a carriage bolt, and that's going to go in the frame rail. Uh, the problem is this access hole there isn't quite large enough to allow that block or the head of the bolt to fit through. It's just a little too small. So we do need to enlarge that. That way we can get this stuff in the frame. Um, if you have a power tool that can do it, definitely makes it faster. I'm just going to use a grinding bit. But um, I've used hand files in, uh, in the past, and you really don't have to take out a whole lot. Usually you can just kind of pick one side of the circle, you know, bump it out a little bit, and on the opposite side do the same thing, and that buys you enough space to uh, get the hardware in there. This is going to be about how big you're going to need to make that hole. So like I said, not a whole lot there. Just want the head of the bolt to be able to pass through as well as that spacer block. And since we did expose some bare metal, not a bad idea to protect it. So I've got a, a primer paint stick here that I'm going to use. You can also use spray paint or whatever you got. Something's better than nothing for sure. but. Put a coating on the bare metal to help protect it against rust and we'll give it a few minutes to dry and come back and get our hardware in. To get the hardware in there you can take a pole wire and it's going to come out of this attachment point and so I like to kind of put a bend in it it just makes it easier. You'll see why in a moment here but you take the coiled end put it through that hole there push it towards the back until it drops out of the access hole there. Sometimes, you know, I got pretty lucky it came right out. Sometimes you will have to kind of reach up there and, and grab it. But what you'll do, take your spacer block, slide that on, thread on a carriage bolt, and feed the hardware into the frame one at a time. So you get that bolt to drop down through there. And then for this point there, what you can do is just take your fish wire and uh, put a spacer block on and a carriage bolt and we're gonna reverse fish wire this. So you'll put the head of the bolt up through first, then the spacer block and drop it back down. The hardware that we're gonna put on the bolts once the hitch is in place uh, it's going to be the same for all the attachment points so you'll just have this flange nut when the hitch is up and the bolts are through you now you can remove the pull wire and thread this onto the bolt now you can grab your hitch and and the hardware bag it's going to come with two of these spacer blocks um, what you can do you can take some tape and tape it to the hole that would be closest to the front of the vehicle and put it on there and then you want to you know make sure that the hole is opened up through there so the bolt can pass through um, and by taping these on it just makes it a lot easier to get everything lined up and, and in position. Now, if you got someone who can help you do this part it definitely makes it easier but we'll take the hitch and take your pull wires and run them through the holes in the hitch and then we'll go kind of up and over our exhaust it's kind of tight so you might have to kind of work it one way or the other kind of get everything in position but to get your hardware to come through you can remove Pull wire, take the nut, and get it started hand tight. Once you get all that hardware and place it hand tight, come back with a three-quarter inch socket and snug it all down.
I want to make sure and come back with a torque wrench now and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. Once you got everything torqued down, that's really all there is to it. And with that done, that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver on our 2022 Subaru Crosstrek.